Hi guys, in this video we're going to go over chapter 6, uh, your chapter 17 homework, so the Fisher effect and the cause of, of unexpected inflation. Now first of all, you guys need to know what is the Fisher effect, so that will be your, um, your, your nominal interest rate equals to the real interest rate plus inflation, okay, so that's very important. So again, it's your nominal interest rate equals to inflation plus real interest rate. All right, so we need to fill in out this table here. So uh, suppose our nominal rate is 11%. So the nominal interest rate is how much interest rate the banks will pay you. That's called a nominal interest rate. So you imagine go to the bank and then right now they says, oh, if you deposit money with us, we're going to pay you 10% interest rate. That 10%, oh, that, by the way, you won't, have, you won't see that today. Today's more like a 0.5 or 0.75%. Okay, so but how much they're paying you from the bank, that's called a nominal interest rate. Inflation, obviously, we talked about this before. This is the increase in the price level. So when every, everything getting more expensive, it's called inflation. And then the real interest rate, this is like your profit. So how much profit do you actually get? Now, the idea is that whenever you have an inflation, um, this will eat away how much money you have. So it will, de it will diminish your purchasing power of the money you have. So imagine that if the bank pays you 5%, you're feeling pretty good about yourself because your money is growing at a 5% rate. But what if at the same time that the, the, um, the inflation is 10%? So even though your money is growing at a 5% rate per year, but the price of everything else is increasing by 10% per year. So if that's the case, you're going to be worse off. Right? So, so your profit, the so real interest rate will be negative. Okay. So let's, look, let's finish the problem here. So suppose the... Um, Nominal rate is 11, uh, expected inflation is 5, so the real, uh, the expected real rate will be just 5%, and then your actual inflation is, five, I'm sorry, 6, this will be 6, 6, 6, 6, 6, alright, so 11 minus 5, and then your, your actual real interest rate, so use your nominal rate minus the actual inflation, so this will be 6% again, um, and then for next one, immediately after increasing money supply, uh, so we have nominal minus 5, that's a 6, and last one, nominal minus 6, that's a 5. All right. Um, now, by the way, the reason why you, you're going to see a, a higher inflation whenever there is an increase in money supply, by the way, this is always true. So whenever there are more money available in the economy, money becomes cheaper, so lower value. Therefore, price level goes higher, and that's the inflation. So it always happens whenever you see an increase in money supply, that means more inflation. Okay, so... Um, so, question, so, so question says the unanticipated change in inflation will benefit which party? So we have two parties here, either banks or depositors. All right, so uh, when you have unexpected inflation, so suppose I'm a depositor, I deposit my money in the bank, uh, and then they pay me 11%, and I'm expecting that I'll be getting back 6%. But however, because inflation is higher at 6%, my real interest rate, the actual real profit is only 5% now. So I'm expecting to have 6%, but I'm getting 5% back. So as a depositor, you are worse off. And vice versa, if you're a bank, you are better off. Because now you're going to pay people back a lower real interest rate. Okay, so this will benefit the banks. Um, now consider the long run impact. Oh, by the way, between banks and depositors, they're always inverse of each other. So if the bank is better off, that means depositor must be worse off. Now, vice versa, if your depositors are better off, that means the bank will worse off because all the interest from the deposit are being paid by the bank, right? So this is like a, a zero-sum game. One person win, one person lose, okay? So now consider the long-run impact of changes in money supply inflation. According to Fisher, in fact, as, expected, as expectation adjusts to, to, to the new and higher inflation rate, the nominal interest rate will do what? So once we see this is happening, uh, and then this will go through a self-adjustment, we're going to be asking for a higher nominal interest rate. So nominal interest rate will be increased to 12% per year because we want, we want to get our, our real rate back. Okay, We want to back, get back our 6%. All right, so let's grid it now. Okay, we got everything right. So um, this is how I do number 6. <laughs> so if you have any questions, let me know. All right, guys, see you later. Bye-bye.